My name's Alan, and I'm HIV positive. <laughs> wow, even when I think back to 2019 when I was first diagnosed with HIV, I think back to those three letters and how I couldn't even mutter them to myself, let alone anyone else. And now four years later, I am, you know, an activist in HIV and sharing my story so I can turn my pain into power and hopefully support other people that are going through a similar journey as to what I was. I want to talk to you today about how HIV affected me in the workplace. And my gosh, did it. I'm sure you can imagine receiving a diagnosis like HIV. As I said, my whole world spun out and I spun out and went into a massive hole um, where I became suicidal, depressed and shut myself off from the whole world. After a few weeks of the initial diagnosis, I then had a massive breakdown in my mental health, which led me to becoming a missing person. It was actually my workplace that made the alert to the police and put out the missing persons report. And that was because I spend every day at work, five days a week, sometimes six. But this diagnosis changed my life. And from that, I was then sectioned on mental health voluntarily, which meant I had more rights than if I was sectioned. And required intensive psychiatric treatment via medication and therapies. So of course I had some time away from work and I'm a very determined person and everyone told me you need to take this slowly and you know you've had a massive change in your life. I was actually diagnosed with adjustment disorder um, secondary to my HIV diagnosis but I was so determined to get back into work and I went back to work and um, with, with my manager we actually built um, a suicide prevention plan and I remember sitting across that table thinking, wow, I'm sitting here talking to my manager about how I can prevent me from committing suicide. And I think back to 2019 and I think back to where I am now. And I was like, wow, the support that I received in the workplace was amazing. But there could have been things that could have been done prior to that, that I now see in a lot of workplaces. Unfortunately, that attempt at returning back to work didn't go so well. And I had another relapse with my mental health and ended up back into a uh, unit. Again, you know, I brushed myself off, returned back to work with some duties that were that were less than what I had prior um, to see if that worked. And then I found myself relapsing again. During this time, because of my mental health, I'd also lost my home, um, meaning I was homeless. Um, you know, my whole world started spiraling out of control. And then I found myself going into long-term sickness. Um, and then we had COVID and I was made redundant. Now, what I want to get across here about being diagnosed with HIV is the importance of talking. And that is the only way that we are going to break the stigma um, in workplaces. Now, in 2020, I used my platform to come out as living as HIV positive whilst working at a development corporation. I felt like I had a comfortable surrounding to be able to do so. Now, I, I received a, a hell of a lot of praise, but also I had people coming to me saying, you know, I didn't know HIV medicine was like this anymore. You know, I still thought it was like the 80s. So it was a massive education piece, and that's why I've continued my efforts in, in uh, you know, HIV activism and the importance of talking and sharing. The more we share, the more people are not going to feel as alone. The way that workplaces can support people living a positive life is by creating forums. Now, in my previous role prior to me being um, diagnosed, we didn't have those forums, but 
it's not just about the LGBTQ plus forum because it's not just an LGBTQ plus issue, but HIV really does have a dotted line into, you know, um, BAME leaning groups and, and disability groups and women's networking groups and all the way through because this is, this is a diagnosis that affects everyone. Um, so yeah, if you are living with HIV, I would say lean on the people around you and lean on the people that you spend most time with. And some of those people are our colleagues.